Hey everybody, it's Mori here from Moldwin Woodworks. I'm doing a video today on setting up the Eon Mira 9S. It's a laser that I've been kindly sent from Eon to use and review and do videos and content for you guys. Um, you can see here in the video it's quite a heavy machine, it's taken four of us to get it in. The Mira 9S is available in two different formats of laser. You can either have it as a glass tube laser, which is what I've got. I've got the 80 watt laser. With the glass tube installed, it's capable of engraving speeds of up to 1200 millimeters a second, and the RF laser installed, it's capable of 2000 millimeters a second, which I'm sure you'll agree is quite impressive. The overall size of the machine is 133 centimeters by 107 centimeters. It's 53 centimeters tall, and like I said before, weighs 220 kilos. The 9S has some awesome features which are really impressive. An awesome feature of this laser is that it's got clean pack design which stops debris and dust and smoke getting in amongst the working parts. Here I'm taking off the side panel to access the components. When they ship this laser there's a little pin on either side that stops the gantry from moving about. It also has a bag of silica to absorb any moisture from transit. Um, I'll just move the camera in a little bit there. See, this is the pin. You just pull it out and you can keep hold of that in case you need to move it in the future. Now that we're finished on that side, we just need to pop the cover back on and then we'll move to the back of the machine where I can show you the chiller and the extraction and all the stuff that you need to know there. First I'm going to show you how to access the back end of the pass-through door, it's dead easy, there's just two wee toggles. The toggles are easy to use, you just slide them towards each other and the drawer pulls out. I'll just pop that back in and then we'll go straight into filling up the water tank for the chiller. Once I get this opened I'll grab the funnel that comes with the kit, it makes filling this water tank so much easier. Although you do need to keep an eye out and you'll see in a minute why. Because we're coming into the better weather, I've chosen to use deionized water. Um, it's believed amongst the community that it's better for the laser tube, as it stops a buildup of algae in the pipes and laser tube itself. Even though my workshop's heated and insulated now, I will be using a RV antifreeze in the winter to protect the tubes and glass tube from freezing. Honestly, I don't know what I was thinking here, but yep, I managed to overflow it. But we're all good, we have a drainage point which I'll sort off camera. Right, once I stop fumbling about with this lid, we'll move on to the extraction pipe. The extraction pipe that's supplied with the laser is 6 inches in diameter, so you might have to get a reducer if you're running 4 inch, um, which I had to do. It just slides on and then you use the supplied jubilee clip to secure it in place. Once this is tightened up, we'll move on to the next side. Accessing these doors is dead easy. You just use the two keys that's provided in the kit. And you turn them and then you lift the, the access panel off. Carefully align it to one side so we can access all the internal mechanisms, including that other pin that I was telling you about before. Remember, don't forget to take out the silica that's in this side too. Once we've done that, we'll move Again, a little bit closer so you can see where this pin is. It's just in between there. Right, we'll pop that out and then remember to keep a hold of that in case you need to move the laser. Now that we've got all that sealed up, I'll show you the dials. This is the emergency stop button. You've got to twist it for it to pop out and that deactivates it or to push it in to activate it. In the kit you'll find your keys to use in this ignition switch. Next up is the air control for the air assist, then the dimmer switch for the internal lights and then your two USB points. Back to the rear again then and you've got your LAN connection and an intake for an additional air compressor, should you need it. This part was incredibly difficult to film. So this is a level guide to make sure that everything's nice and level. Um, I'll try and zoom in a bit so you can see it, sorry for the bad quality. 
The aim, if you didn't know it already, was to get the bubble right in the middle by adjusting these feet. Each four corners has a little bolt you can just see there. Using a 14mm spanner you can easily adjust that one way or the other. Until that bubble is right in the centre of the target on top of the machine. Once you've got all that sorted, we'll jump to the front of the machine now and you can see the front access for the pass through doors. And then we'll whip out the honeycomb bed in. Once you've got the honeycomb bed out, it's time to remove the corner brackets from the main bed itself. A simple Allen key that's supplied in the kit and then two Allen bolts in each corner. Once you've done that, you can start standing up the blades for the blade table. It's dead easy, they just flip onto their side and then you click in on the front side. And then we'll close up the front door and that's it. Job done. Hopefully this video's helped you out a little bit in setting up your Mira 9S. If it has, I'd really appreciate it if you could like the video and maybe even subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.